I'm going to ask a provocative question. Let's assume that the listeners don't care about how we smell. Why should they still be interested either from an intellectual standpoint or, or like a functional standpoint in the way that olfaction works? Do people who study olfaction study olfaction because they want to understand smell or is there, are there other things that are interesting about it? I think it, that varies a lot. I think some do understand it simply because they're fascinated by smell itself. And for me, certainly the attraction of studying smell is that if you, you know, we, we all want to assume, understand how the human brain works. So if you want to do, un if understand means sort of a mechanistic understanding, like I want to generally understand things, you want to manipulate, you want to measure in all detail, dissect anatomy, physiology, activity, structure. And then, you know, the mouse or the rat is a very good model system. Now, if you look at mice and rats, their sort of primary way they're exploring the world around them is the sense of smell. So it's a very good gateway into figuring out how their brain works. If you then look into the brain structure, you know, you have a um, anatomy that allows you to really understand better what's going on. There are much fewer brain regions that uh, interact to process smells. They are anatomically compact. So I think for me, it's an the intellectual appeal is that we have a quite confined structure where we have a realistic path towards understanding how the brain computes, how the external world, the representation of the external world gets into the brain. So I don't uh, care about smells that much. I actually, I would say I have three reasons. And the first reason actually the same, like it is because for me, the sense of smell is a window to the consciousness, to the brain. And it's a very transparent window. Basically, we're very close. The olfactory system is uh, have much less computation and much less processing before getting to the cortex and create objects. We manipulate these objects, olfactory objects, and it's easy to work with the system. It's easy to, and I just want, don't want to repeat what what Abyss said. But at the same time, I have two more reasons. First of all. It's a fascinating system. It is, let's say, the last frontier of our senses. And uh, we know how color vision works. We invested so much in understanding vision and hearing, and our function is a big mystery. And it is, I do care about our function deeply. I do care how our factory world is built, how we smell, what actually, what, what happens in the brain when we smell the rose or when we smell the coffee, how we discriminate others, what actually the, the other spaces, can we manipulate it, can, how they're mixing, and it's a lot of unsolved problems. It's a huge intellectual challenge, and I'm happy to be part of that. And the third reason actually come to me, honestly speaking, I didn't start setting up function for that, but more think about it is that we are moving to a very new era this time because we all are surrounded by organic molecules. We all are smelling all the time. We don't have sensors. We don't have receptors. We don't take advantage of that. And all the evolution, this is probably a unique system that allows my, maybe us to have a look at this world of molecules, world of chemistry, that it's, it's, it's not yet here at our you know, we don't have access. We build a very complicated devices like uh, gas spectrometry, mass spectrometry, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, but the, the nose does it for us. And we kind of, the whole animal world, all, all life, you know, fully integrated with the, with the chemistry. We know much more about genetics, we know much more about cellular processing, but we don't know much about the, the others around us. And nature does know. Nature takes care of that. And we actually have now access to actually understand how that, the nose, the device deals with that. And, and this is a fascinating subject. I start reading how we can smell disease, how we can smell you know, other stuff, what actually, because animal can do this. And that's fascinate me, you know, to the same level as we create objects in the brain. So what you're saying essentially, yeah. Dimas, that we have microphones that are significantly better than, you know, anything we can say or hear. We have speakers that can reproduce what we say much better. We have cameras that are much better than our our eyes. But you know, if we there's no chemical detectors that are anywhere yeah. near the complexity even of our 
human quite underutilized and under trained uh, knows it, right? And, and if you go through and more trained animals, is more un untapped world. This is completely untapped world, and I think that it's 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 a million discoveries will be if we have a right uh, detection. For me, for, for somebody who's a systems engineer like myself, and uh, coming from the Berkeley Sensor and Actuator Center, BSAC, um, I don't know who came up with that acronym, but uh, that's the name of the center. It's one of the most phenomenal sensors out there in terms of its the versatility of things that it can pick up. You have a natural world, and one of the primary communication networks in that natural world are molecular signals, whether they're airborne or they're, they're soluble. And olfaction is one piece of that. Uh, so for me, coming from a detection and diagnostics background and somebody who's innately interested in those things, olfaction is just a fantastic world that's, that's really interesting. So many things are communicated across that channel and it's hidden. It's hidden, it's hidden from everybody. And to me, that makes it more interesting. And what makes it kind of intriguing in some ways is that, you know, we have a relatively poor language, relatively poor intuition for what one can do with smells. But if you look at what, what obviously many animals are doing with it in terms of navigating, detecting, figuring out where they are, where they have to go, what, they're, what, what the, in the olfactory environment is, it seems like the complexity that they can extract from their environment is very similar to the complexity that we can extract from our environment with vision, let's say. And you know, I think probably humans are much better with, uh, with olfaction uh, than they like to admit, uh, admit to themselves. But this, I think this discrepancy between our intuition and what actually, what the processing power of the system has is quite, sometimes difficult actually for studying, but quite, quite intriguing.